I'm hiding behind the steering wheel, but that's because I forgot my normal rig to put the camera up. Anyway, this is Chris, and this is kind of a Pong the Pastor Fisk's ping. Uh, it's amazed me how many people have not really, who don't really know him well, I guess, or haven't listened to enough of what he's said, think that when he's talking about uh, what he's been talking about lately, that he's talking about abandoning doctrine or abandoning the liturgy. And you all really need to know him a little bit better, because that is so not true. But uh, anyway, the recent clip he put out, he decided to end it kind of with a question, you know, kind of this whole idea of why do we prefer a club in a sense? You can see it even at the every, not every, I don't know if I can say every, 90%, 80% of the congregations at the congregational level, the system is not there to preserve word and sacrament ministry. That's not what it does on purpose. No one talks about that. Uh, uh, not, not when they're making the hard decisions. Uh, it's not in the system that we have to talk about that when making the hard decisions. And I'll, I mean, I'll say right now, I mean, I, I serve a marvelous congregation, I think, uh, in, in Rockford, St. Paul, and we're making really strong, strong steps toward being a congregation that's intentionally devoted to word and sacrament. But when we get together for our meetings, I mean, it's, it's not like that's the main thing, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and we're having to work toward making it that and asking these questions. How do we make it that? How do we make it more than just about being a club? And uh, I do have some thoughts on that, so I thought I'd share them. Here's my main thought. My main thought is that we prefer clubs because we prefer clubs. Clubs are easy. Clubs are fun. Clubs get people involved more so than anything else. And um, if you think about it, some people are joiners. A lot of people are joiners. Churches want to make their people active because then they can say, hey, look how awesome we are. I guess it's not a good idea to... Uh, just let people come to church, receive the gifts. I mean, if I was a pastor, I would probably want something going on at my church. But I, years ago, had decided when I was on elders, when I was on board of parish ed, when I was teaching Bible class and going to various meetings and all this kind of stuff, that a lot of decisions were being made. And what I found was that uh, I kind of came up with this phrase that I've heard other people say fairly recently also, which is, what's your filter? I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. Uh, at one point I thought it kind of equates to the rule of faith, kind of like saying, you know, uh, what do you run it through? You want to do this thing, but what do you filter it with? Do you filter it with the gospel, the law and the gospel? What do you filter it with? Um, oh, here's a good thing we can do. Yeah, but what's your filter? Why are you doing it? Are you doing it to build this church into something that's a lot like neighboring churches? Or everybody uh, part of a club? <laughs> no, you know what you say it? Yeah. It's like, well, all I got to tell you is that people like that. And Unfortunately, people get uh, to where they, they don't put a, as much attention into what matters anymore. In other words, uh, well, we've got to have Sunday morning be more exciting, more fun, more entertaining, because we have to get new members and keep old members and all that kind of stuff. And what you end up with is uh, sometimes, I won't say this too radically and boldly, but you end up with messing with the liturgy. You end up 
changing things up too often just to make them fresh and cool and all that kind of stuff. And you end up with revivalistic services where sometimes confession and absolution are absent. And you, you, you tell yourself, well, here's what we, we, we still have the word in a sense. We still have the Old Testament and the, the New Testament and the gospel reading. We still have the sacraments. We still follow those things. So we have word and sacrament. So whatever else we do, wide open, adiaphora. Well, is it? <laughs> I don't know for sure. I think uh, I've heard many people, including Pastor Whedon, talk a lot about that. And he's hammered it home to me that, you know, we, we make adiaphora out of an awful lot of stuff. And instead of kind of sticking with what's proven and what works. And there's got to be a temptation both for congregations and pastors both to want to be innovative, wanting to do something new and something different, earning their paycheck, if you will. We have to come up with themed Bible classes instead of just studying the Bible, or we have to, we have to bring in, here's a good one, we have to bring in false teachers from other denominations and let them teach our people, even if it's electronically, mm -hmm. and then we'll just, if anybody notices anything that's wrong, we'll correct it. That's what we'll do. Instead of saying, maybe there's a better resource out there from a, a good Lutheran resource or at least somebody who's not a false teacher. I'm all for just sticking with Lutheran resources. That's why I either teach directly from the Bible or I teach from something like Grace Upon Grace or Has American Christianity Failed? And my next one after Has American Christianity Failed will be a Martyr's Faith in a Messed Up World. And I've taught from Broken. I've taught from any number of great books because they're good books. The purpose of them is to drive home what we believe, teach, and confess. And anyway, we just don't want to, we don't want to attend classes like that. We want to attend classes on financial peace or on um, 10 steps to a better whatever. And all truth, I've been to those classes. When I first became a Lutheran, I didn't even know any different. I would go to all sorts of different classes and I would kind of... Why I'm a little bit more hook, line, and sinker. Thankfully, I don't do that anymore. And I've been told, well, just wait. If you know, they'll see it. They'll 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 change. They want to get up. Well, there's always a new crop. There's always a new crop of people. If anybody in those classes gets out, realizing they're not really learning the Bible, they're not really getting word and sacrament in the in the church service or whatever. There's always a new crop. Always a new crop. So why do we like clubs? Why do we? How do we make it not about being a club? Well, we stop wanting to be a club. That's what we do. We stop wanting it to be a club. We start wanting it to be a church. We don't want to shrink. The old adage, if you're shrinking, you're dying. I don't think that's true because I think that it's very likely that when you're faithful to word and sacrament, you're not going to be huge. It's been proven any number of times. Lots of the mega churches are mega churches because they don't have what we have. And the Lutheran churches that are mega churches, they may not have totally abandoned the word and the sacraments yet, but they're messing with things and it can't go well in the end. Anyway, that's my little response. I think how do we how do we stop being a club? We only we desire to stop being a club, and we desire to be a church, a church where people want to care for each other, not because it's a club, but because it's the right thing to do. It's the Christian thing to do, where people want to show up and want to be fed the word and the sacraments, because that's what the spirit in them desires to do. 
Anyway, those are my thoughts for today. And uh, I don't expect another ping back from Rev Fisk, but who knows? He might. I don't know. Maybe my thoughts were so rambling that it didn't make any sense and he just wants to ignore me. I don't know. Anyway, this has been Chris, Cafe Sola, and this is just a bonus thing. A little pong back to pet rough fist thing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.